Hey, how's it going, PBO people? It's me, the analyst Alakazams, here with the Syracuse Snorlax for Sunset Beckhams! I was gonna say, where's the energy for my division? But now you got it. Let's go! Toronto Star Raptors versus the Orlando Magikarp. Hmm. Looking at it. Sinistra kind of looks good. Uh, got that grass coverage, got that strength set. Probably going to run Stun Spore for the Gouging and the Scizor. That could be cool. Uh, Garganackle, I imagine we're going to have a Covert Cloaker on the other side. Uh, maybe. Like Covert Cloak Great Tusk or something to stop those Salt Cures from doing too much damage. The, um... The Quillfish could come this week. I could see that to intimidate the Gouging and the Scizor and also the Samurai Hisui. And also do some damage to the Clefable, perhaps. Uh, Terra, Ghost, Porygon Z. No, it can't be Ghost because then Guard just hard walls. It'll probably Terra Ground Porygon Z. Uh, that could be okay. I'm worried about like unaware Clefable because then like your your setup doesn't really mean anything. And I also worry that Slowking can take the hit and kill you back if you've Terra Grounded already. So I don't really love that. I think like um, Terra Flying Torn could actually be really, really devastating. There's not like great switchings. And uh, like it could also be Terra Ground for Raikou. But I feel like Terra Flying, just to spam Terra Blast so you don't have a chance of missing, could also be really, really devastating and also do a lot of damage. Because, like, Scarm can come in and resist, but it can't really do anything else, and it's also going to have to take a Heat Wave. So you might need to look like an Assault Vest Raikou to take those hits. Um, I imagine there's going to be, like, a Brick Breaker, like maybe Brick Break Slow King on Orlando's side to deal with those uh, screens, that Aurora Veil from the Toronto Star Raptors. Big Bax Calibur! Has an okay matchup, but you got to deal with an unaware Clefable if you want to set up. So maybe you're going to be banded here to like Ice Shard that Terra Flying Torn, because that Torn can't actually even tear out of its uh, Ice Weakness. And it can also have like Earthquake for Gouging and Glaive Rush, just for big chip all around. And like maybe Iron Head to hit the Clefable, and you could, that, you could be that banded set for that reason. Um, Toad Scroll is pretty bad. Uh, regardless of matchup, there's no other context to my statement there. Uh, <laughs> Samurai, Samurai Hisui could do kind of good here. I can set up the hazards. The spinner is a good one in Great Tusk, but like I said before, uh, I haven't said it here, but I've said it in the previous recording we just did. When your spinner is a ground type, like a lot of them are, Samurai Hisui, like you can't just bring it in on Samurai Hisui because you're coming into a situation where uh, you could get hit by a water move. I think they uh, are very close in speed. Great Tusk might outspeed, so maybe Great Tusk could come out because then it could threaten with a close combat and force him to switch. Uh, that could be very interesting. Uh, there's no ghost what? type on the Magikarp side. There's nothing to stop the rapid spinning. Uh, what are you thinking, Syracuse? So one one thing just to point out is he uh, Toronto had a forced win week one, and then these last two weeks he hasn't even brought uh, Great Tusk at all. Or Raikou. Um... So this might be the week that we might see it, but honestly, if this is the week that he brings it, it's probably one of the weaker weeks if you are going to bring Great Tusk. Um, I have used Toronto's team in mocks. There's a lot of fun setup you can do with this team, um, but it does have some weird, uh, you know, because you, you do have the synergy of of the Aurora Va or the uh, Snow Warning plus Bax Caliber, um, but Orlando does have a few good answers for it, like. You, like you said, now one thing I want to point out is Orlando currently is our kill leader with that Torn T. Um, so he has been using it very effectively. You know, who would, most, I know you're not a big fan of the regular, or not Torn T, but it's just regular Torn, Torn I. Um, you know, I, a lot of times we write this mod off because Torn T is just almost better in almost every aspect. But Orlando has been using it very effectively and catching a lot of people off with it. You know, it's currently, I think, 7-1. and one. So it's been pretty nasty, especially with the two Terras, because if you, uh, Terra Flying is probably one of the better offensive Terras, and then Terra Ground can catch the things that Terra Flying can't. Um, I think Orlando's been playing the season so far so good. He only really lost to Kuma in a close three, it was a 3 0, but, um, he beat Geo and then he beat, uh, Metro pretty, both pretty handily. Um, 
it can it can go either way, but I'm leaning towards Orlando just because his play's been a little bit better. I'm gonna give him probably the the uh, 65 35. Yeah, I'll go 60 40 in favor of Orlando as well. And uh, with that, the Metro boom bursting versus the Charleston Chestnuts this week. So one thing to just point out is Metro has only really played one one game so far. Um, so it's really hard to base it on his play style. Uh, yeah, it was it was, a, a, fi- her. It was it, her. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, it was a uh, five zero to uh, Orlando. So we don't really have a lot to base on their play style. So really, in this matchup, we're just going based on their teams. Yep. So Charleston has Roaring Moon, the Earthquake, the Knockoff, the Dragon coverage, potentially Scale Shot. Um, that seems pretty devastating for Metro Boom Burston. You don't because you know, you're knockoff resist this is a major problem with his sui quillfish even though i still like it um it's and you violate mon and your major ground or dark resist is taking the knockoffs right so he's coming in on the knockoffs and he's losing his violate which is really really unfortunate because you don't really have anything else that really wants to take the knockoff unless you're bringing your terra uh avalug which i mean maybe you will for the lando and the roaring moon it's not horrible um just because it can deal with those uh, physical guys so well. I think Enamorous is really good here because, like, the poison doesn't resist. So the only real resist is Heatran. You catch him with Earth Power once, or you tear a ground, and all of a sudden the situation's looking uh, pretty morbid for the Metro Boom Burst. And I can see, like, a Calm Mind tear a ground, uh, like, Calm Mind Agility tear a ground uh, Enamorous with, with Draining Kiss and, uh, like, Terra Blast. Uh, really devastating the scene uh you could even be terra fairy draining kiss and then just have earth power that could also be really really devastating and i actually don't see like major counterplay for metro boom bursting if that's what happens um i will say like volby is actually kind of what what? i'll just say what do you think about the roaring moon because looking at this the roaring moon Pre-Marina is really the only thing that wants to come in on this Yeah, thing. I mean, he, he could just spam knockoff, I think. I, I don't yeah. know if he needs to be set up. He could just be, like, Scarf. Or he doesn't even need to be Scarf, because the team uh, is kind of slow, the opponent's team, other than Kilo Trail. Yeah. It could be, like, Banded. Banded knockoff and just, just spam hit, it. Just constantly hitting those Banded knockoffs. Yeah. I think Metro Bernstein is going to be trying to set up, whether that's with Annihilate or Dragonite or Ogre Pond. I see a lot of setter opportunities or even Pre-Marina. I think Volbeat could come try and counteract that i think that's definitely not a not a bad bring by any stretch of the imagination uh i will say heatran because the the water is um a pokemon that's Poor weak enough. to uh or not resistant it's to a, fire it's neutral yeah uh magma storm is very very free there's like no switch in it's actually like devastatingly free um you really don't want anything to take it so I think offensive Heatran could be... Because, like, Entei is a resist, but, like, not really. And same with uh, Roaring Moon is a resist. But, like, you'd have to be, like, the Spadef Roost set to, like, consistently come in. I don't know if you want that to be your Moon set this week. So um, it, it's going to be a very difficult situation to actually, like, switch into the Heatran. I think that's, like, one of the main win conditions for the um, uh, Metro Boom Burst in. I think... Uh, but it also has to be defensive is the issue to deal with Enamorous, maybe. But uh, uh, I imagine the Enamorous is going to have agility, so it can outspeed the uh, Heatran at one point. I think, like, Ogre Pond Wellspring is okay this match. Obviously, it gets quad-resisted by uh, Roaring Moon, so I don't know if, like, setup is super viable. But, like, um, maybe you could set up a Sword Stance and you need Knockoff for Decidueye. But you can also have Ivy Cudgel and, like, potentially Horn Leech. The the uh, Ivy Cudgel resists aren't like fantastic. I want to say it's Empoleon, it's the Cui, it's Roaring Moon, right? So you just gotta kind of figure out a way to deal with them. Maybe knock off, and um, I guess you could have Play Rough as well, right? But then you don't really have a f- Grass move or any way of getting your HP back. Uh, so it's really like picking your poison on what you think's most likely to come out and try and deal with you. In terms of um, Blood Moon resists for cry for the chestnuts. Uh, Cryogonal is actually like an okay one, just because the spadef is so high. 
the blood moon itself does like over 50 but you can only blood moon once and you outspeed and you recover so there's that at least so i imagine that's what cryogon is going to do and then obviously the classic i've seen this matchup like four or five times now in Polion into blood moon the shooka berry Polion to take the earth power and then like do 70 back with surf because Empoleon's usually outspeeding, so it's usually Surf, Earth Power, Live, and then you threaten it out or it dies to the next Surf, right? I've seen that a lot. Because uh, you come in on the normal move that he's going for, the Blood Moon, and then you live the Earth Power the next turn, and then that trade it works out in your favor because you also have Roost. So you can eventually get that HP back sometime later down the line. And Empoleon's also good for Primarina here. Primarina really can't do anything to Empoleon other than flip turn out, so this probably can't be a set of Primarina. It probably has to be like a Salt Vest, or maybe like a or like um maybe like specs and you have flip turn on you something like that and you just flip turn every time until Napoleon's either dead or uh, something along those lines but i'm definitely leaning in favor of the chestnuts i think they have the more prominent answers to the threats that metro boom burston is posing i'm probably going to go like 65 35 in favor of the charleston chestnuts i'm pretty pretty much in agreement with you there just charleston chestnuts has so many answers where metro boom burston doesn't have answers back for a lot of their months it's really going to come down to will the charleston chestnuts let them let the metro boom burst and set up and with that i think he if he brings volby this week volby can carry him hard just stopping the uh stopping anything on metro's end setting up will be a large part of their play style so i think this is definitely charleston's uh you know, I keep I keep I hate keep saying match to lose, but I see I see a large advantage with them being able to just as long as they could stop the setup, all of his answers will easily beat what Metro what she can bring. So I'm gonna lead a little bit more or heavier towards him seventy thirty. All right, we'll move on to the next game. Tokyo Teddy Ursus versus the Tottenham Hoots. So. You will notice that uh, there's a Terrapagos, so you immediately go to the other side and look for the Ghost, and you see there is none, but there is a Bronzong, which uh, is a pretty good answer with Levitate. Uh, it takes the Terra Star Storms well, but the main issue I'm going to have with this is I don't know exactly what it's going to do. It might, like, body press the Terrapagos. I don't know how much that's going to do. And I think Terrapagos will probably run Dark Pulse just for Bronzong, so Dark Bronzong's going to have to Terra out of its Psychic Typing. Maybe if it's Terra Steel Bronzong, so it can still resist, then it would have to be um, Levitate with the Terra Steel, but uh, Terrapagos can also be Flamethrower. So, and you, 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 do need, you can be Heatproof too, so you're going to have to get a guess between Earth Power and Flamethrower to see whether or not this Bronzong can fully wall a Terrapagos. It's a really interesting predicament to be in, actually, to be honest. Uh, other than that, uh, Darkrai with, like, Ice Beam, Psychic, and, like, uh, Dark Pulse is really, really threatening for the Teddy Ursas. They don't have, like, a super great switch into that. That's really threatening. Um, Thunderous Therian actually gets kind of walled by uh, Thunderous Incarnate. Or, I mean, Thunderous Incarnate actually gets kind of walled by Thunderous Therian, because Thunderous Therian has the, um, the Volt Absorb. So uh, that's kind of uh, not looking too great for Tokyo there. But, like, uh, Ursa Luna, it's going to have to carry Crunch for the uh, Miss Magius, or else uh, the Dual Stab is you know, always going to be careful because it's quad immune to both. It is, has an immunity to both. Uh, Metagross, if it's the uh, Agility set, I could see that working. Metagross is a pretty good answer to uh, Hands. A uh, pretty decent answer to Latias. Uh, Manaphy is going to have a hard time getting this sweep off because of like Zarude and Thunderous, who both outspeed by just a few uh, speed points. Fezendipity, even if the Darkrai is Psychic, is still a pretty decent Darkrai answer. If it's like Spidaf, the Psychic won't do like a massive amount of damage, I think. Maybe if it was Psy Shock, it would do more. Uh, Gliscor, I don't know how good Gliscor is this match. I think it's okay. I worry about um, like so, like Manaphy against Goliath score, like because uh, of like Rain Dance hydration and that kind of thing. Um, I think Cinderace is also pretty okay this match. If you're just like banded Pyro Ball, there's actually nothing that really wants to take those, especially if you're U turning around. That could be pretty devastating for Tottenham. I think I am gonna like lean in Tokyo's favor. I think Zarude could have a really really nice match here. 
Like a Swords Dance Zerud could potentially be very devastating. Nothing really wants to take the combination of knockoff plus the uh, grass move, whatever it may be. It would have to be hands. But he can tear out of his weakness to hands, whether that's poison or electric. So um, I feel like it could be a, a really devastating situation to have to do with that Zerud. I'm going to go with Tokyo. Probably a, a 60 40. I do think there's definitely ways Tottenham can win this. I agree. I feel like Tokyo has a lot more, like, easier easier time with this. It's going to come down to can Tottenham find the holes that he needs to find. If he makes, you know, one or two mistakes on one or two turns, he can easily turn against his favor. If he isn't able to, you know, be able to catch, he needs to be able to catch Tokyo on one of, one of the switch-ins, something of that nature to get that advantage, to apply that pressure. I feel like Tokyo has a lot of the, you know, win cons of just like you know getting in the metagross with the agility you know tropagos always having being able to you know take that hit and stuff like that and as well as um you we obviously know he's definitely gonna have to bring bronze on this week so you can easily prep around that um having mocked a lot against tottenham he this bronzong he's gotten creative a lot in the last three weeks with it almost every single time we've mocked this bronzong has been something different and I really yeah like he swept that. with bronze on last week yeah. i think yeah i yeah, he was planning for, I think he did like store power, right? Yeah. So he did a store power sweep. He has a lot of sweeping potential with his team. Obviously, you got the Bronzong, um, the, the Quiver Dance Logan with the Sleep Powder, um, Swords Dance Iron Hands, and stuff like that. As well as you got, you know, uh, Smeargle. Um, obviously, uh, I don't think Spikes or Sticky Webs go really well into Tokyo, seeing how he has, what, three, three immunities to uh, Spikes or Sticky Webs. Um, Stealth Rocks would be decent just to get a little chip here and there, but it's not the biggest thing. Most oh, He has a lot of mons that resist the Stealth Rock. The really, the only thing that's could be doing a lot of chip is the Thunderous or the uh, Cinderace. So Hazards aren't the greatest thing, so I don't know if we're really going to see um, Smeargle this week, but that just means there's going to be even more offensive pressure coming from everything else. Um, I'm going to probably lean closer towards 55-45 Tokyo. But I can see it going either way if Tottenham can find the holes that can punch through and get through Tokyo, uh, Tokyo's line. Yeah, I agree. And with that, we'll move on to the New York Nickets versus the Salt Lake Salandits. So looking at this game, uh, Golden Go actually looks crazy here. Is there a Pokemon that doesn't lose to Golden Go? I guess Alolan Muck. Alolan Muck is going to have to come to try and deal with the Golden Go, because the Golden Go beats everything else. Um, in a 1v1 at least. It's going to be fat with Nasty Plot and Recover. And it's going to be able to take an Enamorous Earth Power. It's going to be able to take a Crunch from Lycanroc. The knockoff from Cyclozar, it doesn't care. It's going to outspeed Golurk and one-hit KO it. It's going to be able to take like Flamethrower or whatever from Azelf and kill it. And it's going to set up on, like, Keldeo, and it's going to set up on, like, um, Suicune. And obviously on Girder as well. I'm imagining it's going to be Culverberry, if I had to guess. So, with all that said, you got to bring Muck. It's probably got to be AV, and you got to use Muck to deal with Golden Go. Because Golden Go is going to go, uh, terroristic on your team if you don't. Um, Hatterene's pretty good here. It deals with, like, uh, Keldeo pretty decently. And it can also do something to, like, Cyclozar, and potentially take a hit in from Enam as well. But other than that, like, maybe you could set up a um, Trick Room, although we really don't have anything to benefit from Trick Room now that I'm looking at it, so I don't really see the point of that. Um, Katarine really does benefit from having a Trick Room partner, I will say that much. Um, EO Speed, obviously very threatening. You know, the Ice Coverage, the Psycho Boost, again, another reason why you should have Muck. Uh, which leads me to Garchomp. I think Garchomp could do some good stuff, but obviously Enamorous has a pretty good matchup into Garchomp. Uh, Garchomp would have to run Poison Jab or some like non-stab move, so it'd have to be like Sword Stance, Scale Shot, Earthquake, Poison Jab. You gotta deal with like a defensive Suicune there as well for that kind of thing, so Garchomp needs a few things to go his way for that to work. But like, uh, Mandibuzz is pretty okay uh, this game, but it does get beat by like Lycanroc and uh, Enamorous. So actually, I think it's kind of bad now that I'm looking at it more. You got Terra Superior, another Pokemon like AV Muck. And the more I'm looking at it, AV Muck kind of just uh, goops you, huh? Honestly. Unless it's... Yeah. I, I would not get rid of Muck's original typing, by the way. I would keep it. Like, yeah, I, I know it helps with like Garchomp. I would just keep it, though. 
Um, you have uh, this is tough because I want to pick Nickets, but the more I'm looking at it, I kind of like the answer so Landits has better. Uh, I think it all comes down to Golden Go, Nickets. You have to position your Golden Go uh, really, really well this game in order to win. Maybe break some stuff with Flareon because I don't think Superior is good at all unless you're going to run the Glare Superior. Try Glare Superior to try and Glare the Muck because that will really cripple it. Not in terms of speed, but just this turns where it won't be able to move. Like try Glare Sub Serp with like Leech Seed maybe. Um, I think Vaporeon, like, it can take hits from Lycanroc and uh, Golurk, so there's that at least. And it can also take, like, a Cloyster hit as well if you like the max defense set. And if you have the Water Absorb, the Kelvia would have to go for Secret Sword, which would also take its defense into account. So I think a, a defensive set, unless he goes, unless he's Focus Blast, which, you know, you have to hit a Focus Blast. So I think Vaporeon has, like, a, a reason to be here as well. Um, I'm gonna, because... I think New York really wants this win. I think he really needs it. I'm going to lean 55-45 in New York's favor, but I actually think this matchup could uh, go in Solandit's favor. It's going to come down to Muck versus Golden Go positioning. How they use them, because uh, how their HP uh, is used. I will say Muck can't recover HP other than like Drain Punch, which isn't very good here, and Golden Go can, so it makes it so Nickets can afford more mistakes. If you know what I mean. If there's one Pokemon on both sides that are so important, the one that can heal affords much greater mistakes. And for that reason, I think I'm gonna I'll give it 55-45 in the Nickets favor. Like you said, like you said, you touched on earlier. I think both teams really want this win. I think the Salt Lake Slandians are uh, Slandits are 0 and 3. New York Nickets are 1 and 2, but the one win was a forced win. So these both teams are pretty much winless. So they're both going to be very hungry this week. Um, now that we mentioned all this muck stuff, watch them not even bring the muck just to troll us. But muck is like you keep saying it's gonna be huge into uh, the nickets. Um, it's gonna be all about positioning, and if if he can keep the golden go uh, alive, if he lets that golden go die at any point, I immediately the match just turns on its head, and Salt Lake has a huge easy time winning this. So it's all it's all gonna be about pivoting and stuff. Um, it's hard to base. You know they're both very similar players i think they both kind of had rough matches last week so it's hard to um predict like based on play style and stuff i'm probably gonna lead lean probably 55 45 into the nickets side just because he has the easier time because goldango can get the a recover versus like the muck can't so it's gonna be in the 1v1 um but it's it, it could it is probably the closest you'll get to a 50 50 matchup All right, we'll move on. Here, the Snow Point Temple Zora was versus the Vanilla Manectrix. So this is a really interesting one. Um, right away, both... Bundle. Yeah. Bundle looks really devastating. There doesn't seem to be any clear um, way for the opponent to deal with Bundle in any capacity. Because I, can... I actually don't see any Pokemon. They no, can take on bundle. Whatever wants to take an ice beam doesn't want to take a hydro, and whatever wants to take a hydro don't want to take an ice beam. Yeah, and it also outspeeds everything. Uh, yeah, bundle is just cataclysmically devastating. There's also like the dark type is Greninja, so Latios actually looks really, really good. It can just spam because uh, also the fairy is Granbull, so like that doesn't want to take a Luster Purge, so it can just pick between Luster Purge and Draco every turn, and really do some devastating stuff. Serilege, you know, it could be pretty decent. Moltres is here, and if it Terra's, that's really bad for it. But I still think it's like... Sorry, go ahead. I still think it's like fine-ish. The removal is Treads. Is there a Ghost? Uh, it is Serilege. So I, I don't know if Glamora, like, setup is good. Or, at, like, Hazard stacking is good. But, um... Meowskarada is pretty good here. I think Meowskarada does outspeed Greninja by like one point. So it can kind of just U-turn around and click knockoff and there's not like super great counterplay. I think Petrunt is actually pretty good in this match. Um, because a lot of the things they hit is super effectively are physical. Which means it can take the hit. Because super effective even if it's physical is like nothing to Petrunt. Although Latios is obviously going to be devastating so you can't really sweep with Petrunt in any capacity. Um... 
I think like Sylveon isn't the greatest in this matchup. That probably gets benched. I imagine it's like Bundle, Latios, uh, Meowscarada, and then probably Donphan, just so you can get rid of Hazards. And then probably... Uh, I don't know if Registeel comes, and if it does come, I imagine it doesn't even need the Terra. Like, what would you Terra to? Fairy, I think, makes it worse for you. I think Water makes it worse for you. So I, I bet Serilege comes to be Terra Grass, because I think that still has a chance. If it gets the Weakness Policy Boost and the Sword Stance, it can still, like, devastate. Because the Moltres does need to have an item. It needs Heavy Duty Boots. So uh, Poltergeist will probably still do a whole boatload of damage to that thing. And obviously, nothing wants to take a bit Bitter Blade. Uh... It could be could be really devastating. I will say be wary of like knocking off the Petron and then if Petron comes in later on Serilege and you can't Poltergeist it because it doesn't have an item on it. But I think like Bundle and Latios are just so devastating this match. Um, it could... I, I am leaning towards the Manila Manectrix like 60-40. I think like Leaves is okay this match. If Registeel doesn't come especially. If Registeel comes, I bet Close Combat really doesn't even do that much. Uh, to leave from leaves to uh, it. Greninja is also okay if it can get the boost and Sylveon isn't there, then like it maybe has a chance to sweep. Um, I do like think Zoro's has a line, but I am inclined to go just because Bundle doesn't like need to set up at all to do massive, massive damage, and there's no like real switch into it at, in any capacity from what I'm seeing. Um, I will say actually, like Serilite setup probably isn't the best idea unless you have Shadow Sneak. Just because um, there's a ditto there. So maybe you could run like Bandit Sarah Ledge, if I'm being honest, or something along those lines. But I am leaning towards Manila. I'm going to go 60 40 in favor of Manila over the Zoravas. So I think this might be the week that we will see the ditto brought. I think the ditto can potentially um, save the uh, Snowpoint Temple uh, Zoravas here. Uh, obviously, you know, ditto can come in on anything that's trying to set up. Or if you really need be, it can come in on the uh, the bundle itself and take uh, take the bundles. Because I don't really see anything that Manila really wants to swap into bundle either. So if the Ditto can position right, get either the setup or get it, get the bundle itself uh, at, for its uh, transformation, I could see it potentially saving the uh, Snowpoint Temple Zero Wars. But I, that's such a niche thing that I, I still think he's going to have a rough matchup. Um, Obviously, he's been very he was successful uh, with the uh, against me with the uh, iron leaves, but I don't know how much how much it's gonna be able to do into Manila, just with this rule edge and um, everything on there being able to counter it. I I'm gonna probably lean closer towards a 70-30 in terms of Manila, just because it has so many things that are so effective that Zoros aren't gonna be able to like handle it. Now, I could see him, like I said, if he can get uh, a good sweep off or get a revenge kill with the Ditto or Petrot here, just being just Petrot and being able to take the hits for him could save him. But I, I think I'm going to lean 70-30 for Manila. All right. I'll move on to the next game. The game 100-0. The Syracuse Snorlax was the Scarborough Sceptiles. 100-0. The Scarborough Sceptiles are going to absolutely... Dominate the Syracuse Snorlax. No, I'm Prob kidding. Uh, probably. I'll probably choke. Uh, I don't know if we want to get... Because me and Syracuse have been like working on this team. So I don't know if we want to give away too much. I will say... like, It's double ghost. So like... A, res a resist to that might be good. Uh, Ting Lu is a pretty good Pokemon. Uh, Fortress is here. Zapdos is here. You know, you gotta find a way to deal with like Tentacruel and stuff like that. Um, six, six, oh, sweep them with a choice specs Morgrim. Yep, choice specs Morgrim hitting the field. Um, I will say, I think this is obvious on matchup, so we'll say it here. Not the best Glow King week, so we'll oh, see how that ha we'll see how look, that goes. Just look at those first three mons and yeah, Glow looking King at the first three, see, yeah, looking at the first three mons. Not the best Glow King week to ever exist. Yeah. Which and is not, unfortunate. Not, not that Tinkaton's gonna kill Glow King, but also Tinkaton doesn't, you know. Yeah, it doesn't care about its stabs at all. So Glow King, if, you know, first four mons. Yeah. <laughs> poor, poor, so, poor Glow King's not gonna have a happy week. Yeah, not a happy week for Glow King in any capacity, which is for sure unfortunate. 
The Terror Captains on the Sceptile side are pretty cool. Mien Xiao, Arbeliva, and Wigglytuff too, but it's probably Mien Xiao or Arbeliva. Um, yeah, I think we can leave it at that. Like, uh, on Syracuse's side, I think, like, you know, there's some threats. I think Hydrapple is pretty threatening. I think Hiram is always a threatening Pokemon. Uh, and yeah, I think we'll leave it at that. Yeah, um, just really this what Scarborough's done so far is leaned heavily on the Spectrier, um, getting seven kills, being the uh, tied for kill leader uh, in Sunset. It's tied with Torn, uh, Torn Eye, uh, which you kind of expect from Spectrier if it's played properly. Uh, so it's going to come down to, you know, a late, late game sweep. Um, if you can get the Spectrier, that's just how you play around it. If you if you get a, everything that can counter it out of the way, Spectrier just wins you the game. So it's be you know that'll be what you'd be playing around, um, yeah. Not have you know it's it's gonna be not not uh yeah it's it's gonna be a fun matchup. Yep. One hundred zero. One hundred zero. I'll go sixty forty in Syracuse's favor. All right. Next match. The Clombrook also, Coyotes. Also game of the week. There is two. Shouts out to Ottawa Don fans. Thank you for game of the week picks. Versus the Cherry Hill Bell Sprouts. Okay. Fat team versus fat team. I think Clombrook is Magnum. number one in Sunset right now. Which is uh, crazy after, you know, in Stargazer, it went so poorly at the very beginning. But now he's like 3-0 and plus something insane. He got a 6-0 sweep with Sneasler, I think. You got a five. You got a five-zero sweep this week against New York Nickets. Yeah. So here's what I'll say. This is a really oh, because Raven makes these. You can see the Wochian. That's funny. <laughs> because Raven Ra loves Wochian. Raven, <laughs> Raven does make these. <laughs> Shouts out Raven. Yeah, the, Wo the Wochian has the crap because Raven's fa favorite draft mod is Wochian. Yeah, he did get a six-zero sweep against Salt Lake, and then yeah. week 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 one he did get the uh, three-zero forced win. Yeah, so Clawbrook's popping off. Uh, I will say in terms of matchup, though, the first thing I notice is there's a Claude Sire here. Claude Sire smokes Sneasler. I've used it before. Uh, unaware Claude Sire puts Sneasler in the ground. It resists both its stabs. There's really nothing it can do. The Swords Dances don't work. Um, uh, and Claude Sire is good for Red Gialecki here. And it's pretty decent for Diancie as well. Um, I think Claude Zire is actually really good here, the more I look at it. It takes the Electro Shots from, like, Arcaladon as well, because it can be, like, mixed defense. It doesn't even need max defense. It beats Sneasler that badly, in my opinion. Um, Valiant, like, the resist, the Poison type doesn't resist Fairy. Is there a Fairy resist? No, because Arcaladon also doesn't resist Fairy. Uh, Valiant can actually spam the, the, the crap out of Moonblast. I think Spec's Moonblast devastates this team. There's no switch in. There's no Valiant switch in. The, only thing the that ground type is Mudsdale. It's just Regilecki, right? Yeah. And Regilecki and Sneasler. So it's not going to sweep. But, you know, you bring it out on something and you click Moonblasts and it's like, it's like over. Um, Specs or like uh, Raging Bolt is also pretty good. Mudsdale isn't the greatest ground ever. So you can kind of just like uh, spam electric moves. And if uh, Mudsdale comes out, it's like not the worst thing in the world, especially because you have Corviknight. Corviknight's also a really good check to Rillaboom. This is actually a devastating matchup for Kyogres. This is going to be his worst matchup of the week. He has, like, full counters well, to Kyogres' mods. He comes down to the issue of he is a rain team. Um, you know, rain teams are... Yeah, but he, he's a rain team without any rain abusers, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, it's a little... It, you know, no Swift Swimmers, obviously. Um, I mean, he's got Archaladon and Regilecki, but it's Chandelure not... Chandelure like... is okay this match, in my opinion. You can kind of just fire off Shadow Balls without regret. Like, I could imagine, like, a Scarf Chandelure with a uh, Shadow Ball is also really good here. Yeah, having no normal um, type. I think Conk is decent this match, but again, like, you have a super effective moves for Claude Zire, but that's, like... And then Slowbro also really, you know, fucks up Conk. It can knock off, but, like, that's it. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to go, like, 90-10 in Cherry Hill. I think Cherry Hill has a devastating matchup this week for Kyogres, believe it or not. I, I tend to agree. I, I can't, you know, I can't see in any good faith Cherry Hill losing this. I mean, we say that now, watch it just be another 6-0 sweep, not to keep jinxing us, and not to keep saying, you know, it's his matchup to lose, but it is Cherry Hill's matchup to lose um, this week. I just, 
everything that Klonbrook has that's, you know. Yeah, um, all the offensive pressure has yeah. an answer. I like Arcaladon, yeah. I guess, is the best thing that he has uh, yeah. to do, like, damage. But I think Quadsire deals with Arcaladon, like, okay. Especially if it's unaware. The defense boost, he doesn't care. You don't even need to keep Quadsire out on Arcaladon because you got five other Mons that could also deal with Arcaladon. Quadsire is carrying so yeah. much that... You and like Mochien can like get it low with Ru Ruination or Leech Seed or something. You just need to get low, you just need to whittle it down the Arcaladon. Yeah. Arcaladon can't win you a game in my opinion. As yeah. long as you play right, Arcaladon can't win you a game. And like you said earlier, Valence Valence guaranteed to get like at least one to two kills this match. Yeah, so, Valence um, can spam um, the blast and there's no real Clon good switching. Clonbrook has to play this knowing that he's gonna be at a like a minus one differential. He needs to Terra Steel his like Mudsdale or his Diancie. But I think Diancy Terra Steel also loses to Claude Zyre. Because yeah. the Earth Powers... Because no boost matters because Claude Zyre is going to be unaware. The Earth Powers won't do enough to Claude Zyre. No. So I'm thinking it's it's for sure in Cherry Hill's favor. Heavily. This is going to be the one I most heavily say. I'll probably give him a little bit more. I'll probably go 80-20 in terms of Cherry Hill. Yeah. Uh, I'll go 90-10 I'll go just to make a definitive guess. I get, like to put one out really out there. But this this will be a fun match if Clonbrook can... You know, yeah, upset us. Find a way. All right. That's Next. it. That's, That's it. it. Thank That's you for watching. That's it. This has been this has been Sunset PRs, and we out. We Please. didn't we didn't forget about Please. you, Sunset. We never forgot. I don't believe you guys. <laughs>